thing actually is pretty nice. What is going on, you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. We've already unboxed and given our initial impressions as well as a PC setup for the new controller by Microsoft for the Xbox Series X and S as well as Windows 10 PCs. Today we are going to be disassembling and reassembling it. Should not be very difficult. Uh, I do have a small business building custom controllers, pictures here. So I have disassembled easily hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of PlayStation 4 and Xbox controllers, as well as some off the wall ones like Switch Joy-Cons and stuff like that. But this is new to me. However, this design is extremely similar to the existing Xbox One controllers. So it should be easy breezy. Let's get sleazy. guys pop a squad over here at the stormtrooper desktop we have our little workspace here we have the new xbox series x controller i have a little toolkit here that i use to disassemble my controllers and i will have a link to this in the description below it does make it substantially much easier to disassemble these controllers uh, but in order to disassemble them you will need will need a few things you will need a t8 and a t6 screwdriver and a couple other little bonus things you can get is some uh, wedges and picks like this that do kind of help you to break the shell apart. So that's step one here. You're going to remove this battery pack off the back. We are going to need to remove that sticker. That does void your warranty. However, if you keep the sticker intact, you can go ahead and pop it back on there if you want. However, if you turn in a controller to Microsoft that's having issues and it's got a custom faceplate and bullet buttons and, you know, freaking painted analog sticks and mechanical bumpers installed, you know, it's all decked out of the titties, it's, it's the bee's knees, it's like one of my controllers, the one-off custom, they're going to be like, well, this controller's been modified, sir, and they're not going to touch it. So, uh, once you've removed that battery case there, you're going to pop off these side shells. Now, eventually, you can just do it with your fingernails, but the first time you do a controller, it's a little brittle, that's why it's good to take this, this uh, wedge here, you're going to get it right up inside that shell, Especially the first time because there is adhesive in there. Jesus fucking Christ. So that was quite difficult to get off, but again, first time disassembling this controller. You know, once you've disassembled and reassembled the same controller multiple times, um, all these pieces, these components are a lot easier to get apart. All right, so you're going to take your T8 screwdriver. You have four T8 screws and a fifth one right here underneath the sticker, which we will be removing in just a minute. Now I recommend having some kind of a jar or a little magnetic cup that you can put the screws in. Um, I'm just going to let them fall onto my desk here. If I do lose them, not a huge deal because I have a Ziploc with about 200 of these screws uh, because again I do customize controllers for a side business that I have. That will also be linked in the description below if you need a one-off custom controller for PC, Xbox, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this sticker. I'm gonna be somewhat careful with it because I'm gonna try and replace the sticker, but if I tear it to shit, I don't really care. I mean, this is my personal controller, so it's not like I'm gonna be returning this or anything like that. But generally, if you get a fingernail up under there, you can actually rip it off in one clean piece. So if you want to return it uh, and you haven't done any major cosmetic upgrades or anything like that, you can. All right. Good as new. That last T8 screw, that's a T6. I grabbed the wrong screwdriver. That is for the uh, board, the chip, which we are we are going to disassemble. We're going to take it all the way down, full disassembly, because we're going to look at every internal component, boys. All right, so those are your five T8s. We're just going to set those aside for now. These plastic shells, we're going to set those aside. I do have a torn down Xbox One, uh, One S controller right here that we can use as a kind of a comparison to see what's on the inside. This is for a customer build. Uh, I've already removed the Rumble Force motors to reduce weight and increase battery life, and you still have Rumble Force in the triggers, so it's always an option I give to people when customizing their controllers for them. All right, so, so far, I mean, this is almost identical. I think the bumpers look a little different. But we're about to get to that in just a hot minute. Let's remove the back shell as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remove these thumbstick caps. Let's get this D-pad out of here. This is a little uh, aluminum cover that goes over it. You can get a fingernail up underneath her and remove that, which lets you drop out your 
D-pad, which obviously is different than the existing D-pad. So as you see, it's hollow in the bottom, and it's, uh, you know, just a hybrid wheel design. So it's got that wheel, but it also has like four distinct points as well, like a traditional D-pad. So they call it the Xbox hybrid is what they call that. Thumbstick modules in there are identical to an Xbox One, so they might still have the same existing stick drift issues. You do have that additional share button. All right, so for the board itself, you are gonna need the smaller T6, and you have one and two right there, another one and two right there by the rumble forces. So again, if you are customizing this controller for yourself or for a customer, whatever, uh, these rumble force motors, they just come right out, or they usually do on the old controllers. Oh, they're in there good this time. Oh wow, okay, so they actually have a little, that's new, plastic tab. You can still get them out if I were to force them out a little bit, but I mean, I kind of want to keep this one intact. Or do I? But yeah, you've got these little plastic tabs in there as where these ones, they're straight. So you they literally, while you're working on the Rumble Force motors, just fall out and they're hanging by the, the two wires, the black and red. And you can literally just rip them off from the chip, remove the Rumble Horse motors. You're still going to get vibration in each trigger, which is actually more immersive and dynamic than the, the Rumble Force motors. Saves about a third of the controller weight, which feels great in the hand, and you get better battery life. So I usually give customers the option to remove or leave the Rumble Force motors intact. Uh, but all in all, these Rumble Force motors look identical to what is in, X is in a Xbox One controller. So uh, before we disassemble the chip, you can do it from here, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop the bumper off. So you're gonna get a fingernail underneath these two pins right here and remove this center cover or shroud, if you will, not the gamer, but shroud like a cover. Then you're gonna remove the bumpers themselves, which are different. Um, I'll point that out right now. They look a lot more durable. They look like they're more expensive premium plastic. So hopefully they don't have the same quality control issues that existing bumpers have had in the past and these are actually having a little difficulty coming out so I think this is a little bit different than a uh, oh I see how that works oh wow well that is much different these these bumpers are a much different design these little pins on each side that's crazy wow that's neat much better design um, Bravo Microsoft they listen to you know one of the major quality control points of failure with the bumpers was uh, that they were they would break, you know, obviously. So uh, this is a more expensive, thicker plastic. They also added these little clips here now that you kind of need to pry off of this little lip right here uh, as where, you know, existing bumpers don't have that. As you can see, the bumpers are a completely different design, uh, much more flimsy and cheap feeling. And uh, yeah, you can see how they're actually actuated. It hits a little, um, a plastic, a little plastic piece in there that hits the buttons down there. As were these ones, the buttons to actuate the bumpers are actually right on top there, so it's just goes straight down. That's why you get that more direct uh, tactile click with the bumpers because they have less, you know, flimsy plastic that needs to flex around. They just hit the button. Um, so that's really cool. Different bumper design, so that's good. Now, if you want to remove these trigger covers right here, there are two T6 screws. Uh, one on each, and then there's a little tab right there that you're going to pry it off. For me, for this disassembly, we're going to be able to be able to look at it just fine without doing that. Uh, but if you wanted to, I don't know, remove the rumbles and the triggers for some reason, they're very light and they do a good job of vibration, so I would just leave those. But if you want to, I don't know, paint paint the triggers or something, that's how you get those off, guys. All right, take our T6 screw driver. And we'll take this top board off first. And I can tell you right now the chip is different. Yep. All right, so different chip in here. That new little board right there, that is most likely for the new functionality of the, the button that they've added. And maybe for uh, you know some USB-C functionality. There is a USB-C port up there. And on the older models, it is USB, um, micro USB. Now these Rumble Force motors are magnetized, so they might uh, suck up your screws in there, but you can kind of finagle them out of there. Now, to separate the two boards, just get a fingernail in there, pull it off, it'll pop out like that. Your uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and that screw that I had stuck in there uh, are gonna fall out. You wanna keep this. Uh, when we go to reassemble this, you're gonna put the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with these metal prongs up, 
just, whoop, turn her around, <laughs> up just like that, and you're gonna sandwich it, bam, just like that, in there, and then snap the boards together. Okay, cool, so we've got our two chips apart now, but you have to be careful because these boards actually have two black wires that are soldered between the bottom board and the top board. As we're over here, you just have one, and it's quite a bit longer, so you can kind of, you have more leverage in there to get this top chip off. So we'll just carefully lift this up for now so we can reveal the screws on the bottom board, which there is one, two, three, four, and five. We'll remove those now. Wrong screwdriver, Kevin. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Hopefully I remember that I have that zoomed in in case I move around the room or something and you can't see me. Now keep your uh, T6 screws and your T8 screws separate. They look different, like they're substantially a different size, but it just makes it easier to get everything put back together. All right, we got three more, it looks like. And again, with those two black wires that are relatively short, and you don't want to rip them out because you'll have to re-solder them, and that's a pain in the ass, uh, and impossible if you don't have a soldering iron, which I do, but still. The average person that's just taking these controllers apart to fix them or customize them does not want to or know how to solder, uh, so they're not going to want to fuck with that. Lovely. All right, this next one here is kind of a bitch to get to because, again, you don't have much room to get that board around, so I'm kind of finagling my uh, the shaft of my screwdriver in there, if you know what I mean, boys. But yeah, this is a different chipset, actually. I'm looking at it right now. I'll show you in comparison to this one. It's um, it's different. It's a different chipset, which is surprising because it's virtually the same controller minus an extra button and uh, USB-C support. Also, some light cosmetic changes. They did shave about a few millimeters off the bumpers and stuff. Okay, cool. So we've got these out now. And uh, okay, this is different too. Okay, so this rubber gasket here Usually on the other controllers, the Xbox One S and X controllers just falls right out. This one was kind of stuck on there um, pretty well. Let's pop those off. Nice, nice. All right, so the analog stick. So if you turn it upside down like that, as you see, I think I lost one, but all your face buttons will come out. And when I say all your face buttons, I mean all of them. Your face buttons as well as your you know, share and options and all that, and your Xbox home button, which is this clear piece right here, or kind of blacked out in this case, uh, all just fall out. So in order to get them back in, you can only get the right button in the right place because they have these little tabs or cutouts in there, which line up with each button. Like that's an A button right there. It can only go into an A slot and it can only go in there the right way. So you can't have like A upside down or anything like that. Cool. So this thing is as torn down as we're going to get it. And what I notice immediately is the bumpers are much more durable. They have a better design. The chip is different, which is quite surprising. I thought it would be uh, identical. Um, but besides that extra little mini board on the back for the extra button, there's now two black wires that run off here. The Rumble Force motors are held in with a more substantial prong design. The analog sticks do look... Uh, pretty much they are identical. These these are, you know, these are identical to the analog stick modules in the Xbox One controllers. And, and you know, they, they are very, very similar, but this is slightly different, you can tell. So cool. That's a Xbox Series X controller. Pose for the thumbnail, boys. I'm still zoomed in. Cool. All right, let's reassemble her.
All right, so to reassemble everything, it's gonna go directly in reverse order. So let's get these buttons in here first. Like I said, this long button here that's visually longer than all the air buttons, that is gonna be your B. It always is. And again, see how it can only go in one way. Now, before you bolt up that chip, you wanna make sure that all these are actually seated correctly or else they're just not gonna depress and you're gonna to have to take it apart again. It's quite frustrating. Get your home button in there. That can only go in one way as well. Um, so Xbox does make it, uh, Microsoft does make it pretty easy to disassemble and reassemble these controllers, even though I'm sure they don't like people doing this with their controllers. I mean, I love to tinker with like little gadgets and shit like this, but uh, most people probably won't be doing this. Um, so this is different. Here's that new third button, which again can only go in one way because they have a large tab on one side and a small tab on the other. Cool, we got that in there correctly. Got all our face buttons in. Sexy. All right, we're gonna get our rubber gasket in here. Like this. Again, you wanna make sure all these buttons stay seated, which it is, I can tell, because the gasket is flush. And you're gonna go ahead and get that uh, back chip, which is this one here on the board. Come on, sweetie pie. Don't be finicky for daddy. Bam. Now, before I screw this in, I'm gonna press all these buttons and make sure that they work, and they do, all of them. Uh, now, the B button is still gonna feel a little bit soggy and squishy compared to the other ones because that actually bolts up to the back chip, not the front chip like the rest of the buttons. So, we're gonna take our T6 screws, and I usually start with these two right here because these will actually hold those buttons in place so you can maneuver without worrying about your buttons coming loose and stuff. Shit, which I'm moving around the buttons right now, so again, I'm gonna check them again. I know it's a tedious process, but I've done this so many times that like for me, it's a lot quicker. If it's just your first time, I think my first Xbox One controller disassembly took me like hours um, because I kept putting it back together and certain buttons wouldn't work or whatever. Sexy. Also, another thing I like is this button here, which is for pairing your controller to a new console, is uh, actually in place a lot better. In the previous controllers, this thing will literally just fall out and float around. So sometimes what I do is put a little dab of super glue on the tip of it. Uh, you can still use the button. It just holds it in place while you're working on it a little bit better. All right, so hopefully you can see in there, we got those five T6 screws back there on the bottom board. I wish I could reveal more of that to you, but I can't move this chip too much due to the wires. Now, before you put on the next chip, what you wanna do is take that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with the metal prongs up just like that, set that in there like that. And then clamp them together which they have a male and a female in, so it'll just kind of snap together like that. Okay, good. Your headphone jack's right there. Then screw in the one, two T6 screws for this chip here. All right, so dropping in the D-pad, you have to have it like this. There's a little, as you see, these three are identical. And then this one right here is kind of a nubby little notch that has to go at the bottom like that. And then you put this little uh, ring over it, which holds it in place. Come on, get on there, sweetie pie. All right, bam. Test that out, works good. Go ahead and get these analog sticks back on. I go ahead and put the bumpers back on. That little pairing button, like I said, stays in place a lot better, which is super cool. Um, now this is gonna be a little bit more tricky than with previous Xbox controllers because you do have those little tabs on each side right there that you do need to get over these right here uh, while lining everything up. So as you see, I've got my pinky and my index finger holding the triggers down out of the way because they will stop you from getting the bumpers in effectively. So, all right, cool. They both function good. Like I said, these bumpers do feel a whole hell of a lot better. Obviously, when you put the centerpiece on, you want to make sure that it lines up with the hole for your pairing. And also for your micro, uh, I'm sorry, for your USB-C port. And this will just snap on like that. 
It's now held in place with those two prongs right there. Drop on the back shell. In order to get it to seat correctly, you will need to squeeze in the triggers uh, because there's little lips under there that need to get underneath that rear shell. Now, go ahead and put on the front shell. Flip her over. All right, gonna put in those T6 screws, I'm sorry, those T8 screws, which are the larger ones. And then we'll replace that sticker and this thing is fully reassembled. Much like a car tire, it's kind of a good idea to go in a star pattern. So, you know, I do like the top right, then the bottom left. Um, it just seems to tighten down the shell evenly to where there's no issues. It doesn't matter that much, as much as like a car tire where it's gonna actually fuck shit up. But still, you know, I've, no I've noticed through doing so many controllers that it just seems to go a little bit smoother for me when I do the little star method. But I generally do the one in the battery compartment first because it holds everything in place. All right, pop these shells back on. They can only go on the correct side, so there we go. And they should just snap right back on like that. I do like that texturing they put on there. They're not as nice as some of their premium Xbox controllers that have like rubberized grips, but you know, still nice for a stock, you know, $50, $60 controller. Well, they're 60 right now, but you know, once this controller becomes a little bit older, they will go down in price. Go ahead and replace that sticker. So it looks like it was never disassembled. Bam, fully assembled. All right, guys, that was a full disassembly and assembly of a Xbox One S and X controller. Whew, that wasn't so hard, right, boys? All right, see you all in the next one. Peace.